finished our under 18 season, I sort of had a meeting with all the big people on the board. Um, me and my mum and my dad went to this little room and they sort of told me that they wanted to offer me a contract and just the emotions after that, getting into the lift to go back to the car. I think we, my mum was in tears and I was trying to hold them back as well. So it was a hugely special day and a really proud one for me and my family. You signed the contract, and you're a professional rugby player. Starting the first time, yeah. where at Gloucester. Yeah, um, so I had probably about four or five games when I sat on the bench and not got on before that. So I was getting a little bit, little bit fed up for it all, and then yeah, just driving into into King's home and getting out there. I think it was amazing. It was almost just took the pressure off me. Once you get out there, you realise it's just any other game. But um, looking back on it now, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to have done. And luckily, it was in COVID, so I didn't didn't have to face the wrath of the shed, um, which which definitely took a bit of pressure off and, and eased the situation a little bit. But yeah, it was it was a, it was a really cool day out. Fast forward to the Premiership Cup. Yeah. Worcester did the Warriors do amazingly in the competition and reach for the Premiership Cup final, your first chance at silverware, and you get the start. So traditionally the Premiership Cup's a little bit of a sort of younger boys tournament, a little second team one. Um, but sort of as a club we hadn't won much silverware for a long time, so we had a big emphasis that we wanted to go all the way on it. Um, got to the final, um, remember being very nervous because obviously we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to get there and, and to to get the silverware and, and yeah, it, was, it went to went to extra time and we, and we ended up winning on winning by a draw because we were the away team or something. But we didn't really care and the celebrations after that were were pretty large as you, as you can imagine. This taste of silverware highlighted the talented squad the Worcester Warriors had at their disposal. However, the atmosphere off the field was a different story. The club was in financial turmoil. First team players were not getting paid and unsure about their futures. And on the 6th of October 2022, disaster struck at Six Ways. The club couldn't find a new buyer and were consequently expelled from the English Premiership, leaving many players unemployed. The Worcester Warriors were no longer. Hey guys, just um, sat here at Six Ways. Um, amazing memories here, joined the club when I was 13. Um, it's looked after me right the way through. Um, it's been some, some great times on the pitch, great times off the pitch, winning the Prem Cup. Um, some amazing home wins last year. Um, there's an amazing fan base here at Worcester, great coaching staff, great backroom staff and, uh, and a real community club and uh, we're just real frustrated now, we um, haven't been paid, we don't feel like we're getting what we deserve as a group so we need answers. When were you sort of aware as a first team player that things weren't quite right? Um, there was a lot of red flags, sort of a couple I'll mention is I lived in an academy house which is housing that the club paid for and we had Bayless turning up and saying you need right. to you know, we've, we've got a few days before we need the keys, that sort of thing, changing the locks on the doors. So that was a bit, a bit alarming. Uh, we got paid late for probably six months or so. Um, you know, we had bailiffs turning up to the club, taking bits of gym equipment and things like that. So I think there was some pretty big warning signs. Um, so yeah, it was, it was almost inevitable really. Um, and then sort of the day it all happened was, was yeah, it was always, we'd always all prepared ourselves a little bit as sad as it was. There was a couple of boys that were trying to keep positive, keep training, sort of on the view of oh, I was going to turn around, um, all of that stuff. And then, as you can imagine, a lot of boys were very unhappy, a lot of boys wanted to go on strike. You know, father of three kids, paying for a mortgage, paying for a meal, putting food on the table. I think it's quite hard to look past the what everything that's going on and just focus on the rugby when, when you can put that all into perspective. So yeah, it was a pretty toxic environment. Um, there was tears, there was arguments, there was a couple of fights and stuff like that, but I think that's, that's pretty normal. We were very much in the dark. We sort of were reading stuff on Twitter that was telling us what was going on rather than sort of being addressed, which is quite disappointing. Um, the RPA, which is a Rugby Players Association, were, were decent in the sense that they speak to us with lawyers and keep us in the loop that, oh, if this happens, your contracts mean this or you're owed this, and they're still trying to scrape some money back from us now that we weren't paid. The move to Northampton, how early did you out of So I, I, I knew I was going to come here just as sort of a career move. Um, and then sort of as time was going by, they sort of mentioned, oh, well, if you need to, if you need to come here, if Worcester goes to the pot, then sort of the doors open. And luckily, within maybe six or seven days of the club going under, I was turning up in Northampton kit to train, which was ideal. Um, obviously very fortunate compared to some of my teammates, but mm -hmm. I suppose you have to be slightly selfish in, in times like that. So you join, join Northampton, the scene's already in, yeah. in motion. 
How was it adjusting to the new teammates and, and how did you hit the floor really? Yeah, um, like sort of off pitch stuff, it's always, you know, it's like a new, new, new job, new place to live, sort of trying to find your feet, it's never fully comfortable, but just sort of trying to be myself. Um, with the rugby side of things, so I was quite lucky, turned up and Dan Bigger had picked up an injury um, and that sort of was between me and James Grayson to play and they decided to put me in pretty much after a week or so of being there, which was great and luckily felt like I, I did fairly well on my first few games and sort of didn't look back, just sort of took it week to week and I probably wasn't until the end of the season when I reflected like that was a really strange time, like moving around and so much moving past going on, um, but yeah, it was a, it was a good season. For, for everything you put into perspective. Certainly looking back on it, weird times for rugby, but yeah. hopefully we're onwards and upwards from now. Um, yeah, Franklin's Gardens, known as a fantastic yeah. um, rugby stadium in England, it's got so much heritage and history behind it. Yeah. What was the feeling running out the first time? Yeah, amazing, amazing. The uh, fans there are so passionate. Um, it's a massive rugby town, Northampton. I've sort of got a taste for it, you know, sort of. You know, you walk around the place, you're getting people saying well done on the weekend, or if you lose, telling you that you played rubbish. But that's that's great, and you know, the fans are so supportive, and you know, they're always singing and chanting. I don't think there's any anywhere better in the league to play when you're when you're doing well in a, in a Northampton shirt. So you've arrived at Northampton, um, new players. Who sort of had a key impact on your development? Were there sort of any senior figures that really left an impact on you in your first sort of season? Yeah, um, I think I think so. We've got quite a young squad, so probably a few boys I can relate to more. Someone like Fraser Dingmore um, played a lot of games when he was young and sort of helped me out. And sort of on and off the pitch, you know, Tommy Freeman, um, our girlfriends are very close now, and he's he's probably my best mate. So we, we spent a lot of time together. And I think it was more just rather than from a sort of senior point of view, putting an arm around me and saying, "Oh, do this." It was more just like young lads like that, me getting on with them and made me feel sort of like I'd made mates here and stuff, which which counted for so much. So yeah, I'm really grateful to those guys. Must have been surreal playing with some proper yeah. legends and proven names in the game, I can imagine. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So you have a great year with Northampton, first year, settle in well, um, and Northampton Saints land the Premiership semi-final. What was it like to play in such a high-stakes contest? How, how did you find it? Yeah, uh, well, definitely probably the biggest game I've played in. Um, it was, you know, it was, it was definitely upper level from a normal Premiership game, and I sort of noticed that. And probably didn't didn't perform quite how I would have liked, and the team didn't either. But look, it is what it was a great, great experience, and just just to be out there and say that's something I've done uh, is always all good sort of experience in the bank, and hopefully, if the opportunity comes again, we'll be we'll be far better prepared, and I'll be far better prepared to to go again. There. Doesn't seem long ago since you first signed that professional contract. Yeah. <laughs> Are you surprised at how fast you sort of? kicked on in your career? Uh, I'd, I'd always hoped it would go like this. Um, obviously there's been bumps in the road, things like that, but yeah, I've been, I've been pleased pleased to, to a large extent about how, how it's going so far. Um, obviously sort of next step from here would be I'd love to get, get a cap by the end of the season for England. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, just, just to make myself a sort of real household name in the Premiership, just keep, keep playing, hopefully keep playing well and hopefully things will keep going on me up. This year with the World Cup, the Premiership season's a lot yeah. more condensed, a lot more compact, combined with the nature of your position where obviously at fly half you can be targeted, take a yeah. lot of shots. Yeah. How are you finding the physical demand, which I can imagine will be at an all-time high, and how important is managing the workload and recovery for you? Yeah, definitely. Especially this season, I've put a massive emphasis on, on recovery, so trying to stretch most evenings, go down to the sauna and get in the pool most evenings. Um, and it's, it's so important. Obviously, we've played a lot of pre-season games. We've had sort of 10 games on the bounce this weekend. So the club have been great in sort of rotating people a little bit and giving you time off just to fully sort of not physically get away from it, but more importantly, mentally, I think it can be pretty tough just every week going through the same thing, getting up for a big game and then trying to set back down. But yeah, as you say, the, re the recovery side of it is so important. We've got, got a long way to go yet. So. Yeah, the body's definitely feeling it, but um, can imagine we're getting through. We look pretty, look pretty tough out there. Yeah. Building on what you said about um, the mental side of things, the workload, yeah. media scrutiny, pressure. It's it's at an all-time high in rugby. You know, yeah. you've seen the lower power always happened recently. How how important is looking after yourself mentally? You look at amazing charities at the moment. The rugby community are really grouping with Movember. How important is taking care of yourself after? 
a relentless few weeks? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think whether it's from small things to just like not checking comments or not not really in, in, engaging yourself in, in sort of toxic conversations or uh, you know, big other things like that. You never know when someone's gonna need to talk talk about how they're feeling or get stuff off their chest. But I think actually as a as a sport, rugby's in a really good spot with that where I think everyone would feel fairly open to speak up. I think it's, it's definitely a conversation that is being had in a change room over a coffee or you know, for for a text message. So I think yeah, it's, it's it's definitely important. It can get pretty tough at times, especially if you're not playing well or the club's not performing. Back to the playing side of things. It's been a decent start to the season for you guys. It seems pretty hot at the top, very yeah. tight between the top few teams. What are your sort of aims and aspirations for Northampton Saints for the rest of the year? Yeah, we we set down as a squad at the start of the year, and we want to we want to be a be in the top two by the end of the season. Um, That'll give us a home home playoff game, which is which is massively important. I think 85% of the time the home teams won won a playoff semi final, so that's that's our main target. If not, um, yeah, we, we definitely expect ourselves to be be in around that top four, and hopefully can go on better than we did lose in the semi final last year. And ideally, I think there's no reason why we can't maybe pick up a bit of silverware. But that that would be that would be best case scenario. Yeah. The hopes and aspirations of a young fly half highlight his rapid growth through the ranks of professional rugby over the last few years. Smith believes he has the ability to take his game to the next step at the international level in the upcoming Six Nations. We have players at the start of their international careers, the likes of Oli Hassel Collins, Ben Curry, Finn Smith. Last year in Steve Borthwick's Six Nations squad must have learned a lot of things Describe to me your, the feeling of when you first had that call that you would be in and around the squad. Yeah, it was great. Um, obviously, a little bit unexpected, especially looking back at sort of six months prior. I'd been at or less than that three months prior. I was unemployed, so that that yeah. was a pretty nice surprise. But now it was great and so cool to sort of be in be in that mix and be around some of the best players in the country and and learning what it's like to sort of get yourself up for a game. And, that sort of whole different intensity to a normal Premiership match. So yeah, it was it was a great experience and something hopefully I can be involved with more in the future. You must have you must have walked in and looked around, seen all yeah. these legends who would watched on the TV probably only a few years before. What was it like? Was it daunting or did you find they're all welcoming and you sort of hit the ground running? Yeah, they're all very welcoming. Obviously, they've all been in a similar position to I was before. I think the first day sort of went out for a bit of a kicking session and it was me. Marcus Smith, Owen Farrell, and Johnny Wilkinson comes in and does all the kicking coaching there. So I was a bit yeah. like flipping it. Starstruck. Quite starstruck, but you know, it just becomes normal after that, after a couple of days and you settle in. And um, it was quite positive in the sense that you sort of realise you're maybe not as far away from those guys as you might have thought you were. So yeah, it was, it was a really positive experience in that load. That load. Could you highlight any players in particular who you've really got to you know, gain yeah. some knowledge from? Yeah, I spoke, spoke to Marcus a lot about things off the pitch, on the pitch, sort of kicking game and, and try to learn as much from him as possible. Same with Owen, so obviously two guys that play in my position and um, yeah, they, they were great in sort of trying to help me out and just give me little, little tips and pointers here and there, so I learned a lot from those two. Yeah. Spending that time in the camp must have really filled the fire for you to push on and be in the squad again and obviously you've had a great start to the season. What's your sort of Aims for internationally wise, are you really trying to push for a spot in that Six Nations squad? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I sort of sat down with myself at the start of the year, and sort of first thing I wrote is my goals was to get, get a cap for England by the end of this season coming. So, however that might look, um, obviously it means I need to get selected in the Six Nations squad or maybe one of the squads after that. But yeah, the first, first prize for me would be being involved in the Six Nations squad coming up. Um, I think obviously with Owen taking some time off from the game, I think that's potentially opened up the door a little bit for me. I've just got to make sure that I play well and, and hopefully don't get injured and then it's, it's up to the coaches to hopefully pick me and be impressed by, by my performances.